I wanted to make pieces that seem as if they were moving or living, as if you know they were really breathing. My work, it's so many things. It's joyful, it's pop, it's craft, it's baroque, it's decadent. This is King style. My name is King Handik Pinku and I'm a ceramic artist. Paris is, is my base, is the lab. There is a long wall in my studio that has a lot of images on it and these images represent things that influence me or bits of the history of ceramics or the music that I like or the type of pieces that I like and so on. And if you had to print out my brain, you would get that wall. That's where I can just write whatever I feel. It's as confusing as my brain works. As soon as I have an idea, I can draw it. And then I'll look at the drawings, play with the colors, and next step is choosing the right type of clay to make the type of work I, that I want to do. Then I wedge the clay that enables you to take off all the air bubbles in the clay and prepare the clay. And then once the clay is well prepared and ready to be worked on, um, I get on the wheel. And that's when I start throwing the basic shapes um, that will make the base of my artwork. To make a piece, it might take me three weeks to two months, roughly. Um, but it's more complicated than that because I work on so many pieces at the time. You know, I work on 20 pieces at the time. So while some pieces are drying, I'm working on another piece. And then while some glazes are drying, I'm, you know, on another piece. So it's never one piece. In 2012, uh, I went to visit a friend in Tokyo and we went out one night and I met this Japanese girl who told me about pottery. And at the time also, I was sort of like soul searching, like I was already involved in a career in communications, but I knew that my creativity could serve better uh, causes. And um, she told me about it, and somehow that word pottery stayed in my mind, and it kept coming back, coming back, coming back. And when I came back to Paris, I found this Japanese workshop, pottery workshop, where I could start pottery for the first time. And once I touched clay, it's almost as if like sleeping thoughts awakened and that's when, you know, things change for me. It's almost as if you feel like there's sort of like electricity coming from your hands throughout your whole body and it awakens something, that seed inside. And then you question your whole life again. I trained between Paris and Bizen in Japan. And Bizen is one of the six ancestral city for pottery in Japan. 
there I was able to connect with uh, Toshiaki Shibuta, who became my sort of like pottery father. Him and his friends taught me uh, the kikuneri technique, the spiral wedging technique. It's sort of like prints in the clay's memory, the circular movements, um, and so it's easier for you to throw. He taught me so many things, um, for example, throwing slowly on the wheel um, and taking your time. Um, while you throw, you don't have to throw fast. And let the clay absorb each of your movements and, you know, be slow with it, be gentle with it. My friends in Japan taught me so many things about their culture, first of all, but also, you know, about life. Because I lost my dad very early on, like when I was eight, nine. So somehow through ceramics, I sort of like found, you know, other fathers and, you know, big brothers uh, that could teach me things. We are very different. It's a different generation, different lifestyle, um, different skin color, but we connect thanks to the clay. And for me, that type of relationship is, is gold. At the beginning, I was only making functional pieces. And because I looked up to my Japanese um, pottery fathers, I wanted to be like them. But they also made me realize that no, I, I cannot be like them and I should be me. That's when I started to make more sculptural pieces um, and realized that yes, my energy wasn't a potter energy, it was more of an artist's energy, someone that wants to create different things and not make the same thing over and over again. When I was younger, I used to be bullied like a lot and was sort of like not accepted by my other peers and I was able to find like security and peace in video games and virtual world where I could control the character, where I could choose the character I want to be and, and go on an adventure. Games like Zelda um, or um, Metal Gear Solid. It's so amazing to be able to pull these concepts and grow these concepts that you know you grew up with, that you had in your childhood and like drag them with you into your adulthood and bring a message out of it. I then was able to dig deeper in who I am, where I come from, my roots um, from West Africa in Benin with the spirituality and so on. When I train in Bizen, I sense spirituality in the way that my friends were making their works. And that spirituality is highly infused um, by the culture of Shinto. And that made me realize that that spirituality was very similar to the one of Voodoo in Benin in West Africa. And both religion or system of beliefs, uh, they share the roots of animism. And there was this, I don't know, like the, the, it resonated in me. It also feeds you know, me as a maker um, in my studio when I create my work because I use clays from different countries, from both countries too. I don't have an academic background in arts, so I just use my intuition to put colors together. But I have sort of like developed my own theory about the way I use color. And one of them, one of the theories is that for my work, it's 80% texture and 20% pigment. Um, 
and that's that's how I work. So what really brings life and gives life to the color or the piece really is the texture. Working with the four elements, earth, fire, air, and water is amazing because these elements are older than us human beings. And I truly believe that these elements know more than we do. It's almost as if I'm asking questions about my future and I'm consulting the clay um, to gain knowledge out of it. I've had people asking me if it tears my heart to, you know, part from a work or, you know, just sell a work and see a piece leave the studio and I'm like, no, like the whole adventure of thinking of the piece and then making it and having it out there um, is the whole fun for me. Then what comes at the end of that process is a byproduct of that whole adventure. <laughs> 